Hey Run Junkies, today I am starting a once a month series focusing on nutrition. Any long course triathlete will call nutrition their fourth discipline and marathon runners are always taking into consideration their training fuel and their race day nutrition needs. Of course, it comes as no surprise that nutrition is a vital part of our athletic performance. And for some people, eating well comes easy and naturally, not for me. I've never been a fan of counting calories or grams and ask me to keep a food journal and I will run screaming to the next Cold Stone Creamery. So if you are anything like me, this series is for you. Simple tips will, when they are incorporated, help you increase your athletic performance, get better rest and recover faster. Now here's a little background on my nutrition journey, if you can call it that. In the past, as I've trained for increasingly longer and bigger events, I've pretty much let myself eat whatever I want because I felt like it was what I needed. I just needed to get calories on board. I still feel like I deserve a decadent dessert every once in a while, but I do know that I needed to counterbalance that with some healthier choices. I'm not making a lot of nutritional changes because I want to become faster or more competitive or chase some elusive race goal. Rather, I am starting to make these changes as a long-term investment in my athletic capability. So last week, I met with Ellie Freeman over at Simply Nourished. She takes a very simple approach using food to combat a wide variety of imbalances. In my initial consultation with with Ellie, I came away with a ton of great information and I do want to share some of those insights with you. This is by no means a comprehensive list, so if you want to link to Ellie's website, it's in the description below. Tip number one, stop measuring. Leave the cups and the spoons in the drawer and go by look. This is your measuring system for determining your serving sizes. One fist is a serving of veggies. The palm of your hand is a serving of protein. When talking carbs, it's about half a fist. And when dealing with fats, it's either your thumb size or the amount you can hold in your cupped hand. Tip number two, when you're hungry and you need a snack, start with a source of protein. Obviously, meats like chicken and fish are great, but so is Greek yogurt, some kind of protein fortified drink, or eggs. Eating protein rich foods will curb the hunger craving, but this is not for endurance athletes at the expense of carbohydrates. We don't wanna go low carb because we do need those carbohydrates as fuel. Protein helps us recover, build and sustain muscle. My favorite go-to is either some kind of protein bar or protein fortified chocolate milk. Tip number three, at mealtime, eat your veggies first. Start with a target of four to five fistfuls of veggies per day. And when you sit down to lunch or dinner, eat those first. I personally like to snack on peppers or other raw veggies while I'm making dinner. I feel like it saves a little time. It probably doesn't, but it works. I also like to toss a handful of leafy greens into my morning smoothie so I can get kind of ahead of that veggie curve throughout the day. Tip number four, hydration might seem like an obvious issue for a lot of endurance athletes. However, many of us go overboard in terms of our fluid intake. It is possible that we're kind of drowning ourselves in water throughout the day. The general rule of thumb is half your body weight using that number as your target fluid intake. For example, a 150 pound person would consume 75 ounces of water, ideally, per day. Any more than that, and we begin to flush really good nutrients out of our system. That is just the tip of the iceberg for us today, though. If you want more tips on nutrition and training, please subscribe to this channel. Also, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. That is it from me today. Thank you so much for watching. Get out there, go find your awesome. We'll see you next time. And until then, happy running.